All right, so now you got into an uh, altercation at a, mm. um, at a bar, a local bar, while you were there. What happened? Fights, alcohol, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, this was like the first year. Since yeah, day, I was right? there. I, I just, listen, I was, I, I don't, I, I can say it as best as I can remember it. It was, um, there was a lot of friction in that club and things just got a little bumpy and uh, alcohol makes, alcohol's never been my friend. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, my wife will tell you um, nothing, alcohol, it doesn't plan on making me nice. Right. And I was allergic to it at 19 years old. And I just remember, you know, it, things popped off. I ended up in a parking lot. And next thing you know, I was surrounded by SWAT teams. And that was kind of my introduction. So what coach said to you after that? Coach wasn't happy, you know, but there's a guy, Jack Furtick, who used to coach with Coach Tark. He was, he was kind of like the, the general manager of the team. He used to tell us on pitch day, smile because that's, gonna, that's the picture they're going to use when you get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you, go, you get to work. Yeah. You got four games. Uh, uh, you finished the season off uh, averaging 17.5. Mm -hmm. I think the last four games you dropped like 31 points per game. Mm -hmm. Now you're putting in the work, right? Any more pressure on you after that now? Or you just, like The pressure was internal, right? The pressure, and I, and I say internal in a way that it was. It kind of stayed within the South and North gym of Fresno State because you had real dudes who were coming, man. Like you had Willie Farley, Nick Irvin, Rafa, Kenny, Trey Folks. I mean, you had all Americans that were constantly showing up. You know, people wanted to play for Coach Talk. People wanted to be in that world, yeah. and uh, and then people needed that world, right? So oftentimes we got guys who you know, went to Georgetown or went to Cal and it didn't work out for them. And they feel like they can get it at Fresno because, you know, the way I kind of teed it up and set off there. Um, but I had a coach and his name was John Welch. And in fairness too, is Jerry, uh, Jerry Tarkanian's son, Danny. Both of my assistant coaches took me under their wing. And it was the first time in my life that I was taught how to get better individually. Like I didn't know, I didn't know like the commitment. Right. I, I, I had no idea at 19 years old, like I had no idea that I was supposed to be in a gym at five o'clock in the morning working on my Just handle, shots up. Yeah. you know? And I had no idea after the hour of ball handle, I'm supposed to go in and shoot for an hour mm. and then go to class and come back. Um, so that year I sat out I was, I was dialed. Like I was like, if you look at it and it's, and it, you know, obviously it's 20 years ago, but if you look at me in 1996, Fresno State sophomore, my body, it, it's vastly different than 1999. Mm. Like I was way more prepared right. to walk into that world. Right. And that's why 17 and a half a game can do. And Rolling Stone came into town, you know? So um, on November 25th, mm -hmm. filled another, another drug test. It's after that. And you failed a couple of other drug tests after that. Mm -hmm. what, what happened? Partying, right? Like, it's tough being you 24-7. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says. You know what I mean? Like. It, I have so much, I, I have a different vantage point now because I've, I, I have recovery. But like when you don't have recovery, like being you 24 seven can be a monster. Mm -hmm. And, and I didn't, I didn't know how to be that, you know? So again, it wasn't an everyday thing. It was like, it came in waves. And when it did come, it just came. Like when it came, it came. And, and, you know, testing positive at Fresno. Fresno was by far ahead of themselves as far as helping their athletes with substance use and mental health. Like they were way ahead of the curve. And you know, where most colleges, it was punitive. We're gonna punish you, learn your lesson. Fresno was gonna help you and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna teach you how to be able to manage this 
but you had to admit it first. And that's yeah. why you did the press yeah. conference and then things. So you had to admit to yourself, which is one of the first steps, yeah, right? Yeah, no doubt. That's why it starts admitting, right? And it's you, hard, man. It's hard at 21 years old to say I'm going to... Yeah. And, that's the, and that's the narrative around drugs, right? Like when you tell a 19-year-old kid or a 20-year-old kid, listen, you're an addict. Mm -hmm. Like instead of saying we just identified like something that you're allergic to, like it really hurts you. Like it should be like... Phew, you know, I got it. Right. Instead, it's a punishment. Right. Like, so I always looked at it as a punitive thing, even though, you know, I was failing drug tests and going to rehab and, and press conferences. It was like, man, I got caught. But at, how was it like at that age, you would attend the press conference mm -hmm. and tell the, you know, national TV that I'm an addict? Mm. It was tough. It was tough because, you know, I was, I was hooping. Mm. Um, I was looking forward to that season. And again, it was tough because I have family that, you know, people don't understand. Family comes with you, you know, family feels you, you know, and I've learned that now that I have children, right? Like you're only as happy as your unhappiest child. Right. And, you know, like there's a time in my life where I was, I was unhappy and I knew my mom and my dad had to feel that. You know, were they with you at the press they conference? Would, my mom was with me at the press conference. Yeah, my mom was with me. Um, you know, that's the thing, like, and I'm, I'm sure we'll get to that, but my mom never saw me sober. You know, she never got that shot. Um, I never gave her that gift. You know, like, she died from cancer at a young age, and, and um, she knew how sick I was. You know, I was, I was in the middle of a brutal heroin addiction when she was diagnosed. Um, so I never gave her that gift of seeing her child happy. She sees it now. Totally. She sees it. Yeah, yeah. You don't, you're not going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so after going to rehab, yeah. we turned the team January 8, no, 98. What's, what's the forecast now for you? Going back? Forecast is kind of, you know, redeem reputation, right? Like kind of put a body of work together that, that gives you some stability and some character. Um, so I jumped right back into it and started hooping. Um, but they, they did a, uh, it was a like special. Between um, the Madness on right, Fox. Right. It was a national Fox. Yeah. Not like. Not the local Fox. Not national. regional Fox. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So we, I believe, and I might be wrong, but we might have been the, that crew left, I believe, Michael Jordan on his baseball documentary and came right to us. Mm. And we were kind of like the first or second reality show. And it was a reality show. Okay. You know, there was a lot of reality. Yeah, because you had to did talk about your own off, you know, everything. Oh, no doubt. They witnessed everything. They were, you know, I mean, it's cameras follow. How did you feel about that? Like, it was tough for me. And, I, and that's why. Now I, you had to make sure you're clean. You're yeah. Still, it's like, you know, I'm not partying. I'm not showing that side of me. Like, yeah, and I, and I don't know if I ever. I don't know if I ever faked it that good. You know what I mean? It's because yeah, the just, demon is still there. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. It's 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 there and it's waiting. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, Mike Wallace interview, the which was dope. The legendary Mike Wallace. <laughs> so they so they told me Mike Wallace came into town sixty minutes and they're like Chris, sixty minutes is in town, and then sixty minutes wants and they and it might be true, but the legend of sixty minutes is is that they've been in town for three weeks already. Mm -hmm. They do their they do their work. So right before they even got there, they're there. Before you even know, they're already researching. So when you sit down with 60 minutes, just know that they know the answers. And uh, and I remember, I don't know if it was Coach Tark or it was it was my athletic director who said, um, you know, we don't want anybody sitting down with Mike Wallace. No players. And I was like, I'm sitting down with Mike Wallace. Yeah. You know, I mean, I have a chance. That man's a living legend. Yeah. You know, so Mike Wallace was cool with me. Right. Fresno State, he wasn't so cool with. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. But with me, he was, he was cool. Like we sat there, we talked about JFK. We talked about you know the hostages in Iran, and he just he just dropped it. Yeah. And everything he's been through. So, um, and when I hooped in the NIT at Madison Square Garden, he came. He, he came to the game. Yeah, yeah. So did he speak to you about your issues too? Oh God, yeah, yeah. That's what it was all about. It was about my issues and and 
you know, the reality show and kind of what we were going through under the microscope at, at Fresno. Okay, so you, fe- you finished the season strong mm-hmm. at Fresno State. You go to NIT, like you said. Um, actually, you played at the Garden. Mm-hmm. It was a, um, but you guys lost, right? Yeah, we lost in the championship. Um, later in prep con- conference, you announced that you were um, going to stay at Fresno State for another year. Mm-hmm. Why didn't you want to leave? What? Um, I wanted to win. You know, I didn't win in high school. I didn't win enough, right? And and I try to tell kids this all the time, like, you know, obviously, you know, you win games in the NBA, but that's nothing like winning games in high school. You win games in college, that's nothing like winning in high school. I didn't win in high school, so I wanted to go, I wanted to win a little. Right. And sadly, you look at the roster of Fresno State and you see NBA players, all Americans, and we don't win. You don't win. We don't win. We can't. We we can't put it together. And I was part of that. You know, I was part of that instability. But you did beat Duke. Yeah. No. <laughs> when they were I balled against Duke. One. Duke. No, Duke beat us. But I had a big one against oh, Duke uh, uh, in Alaska. Um, the, the Alaska, Great Alaska yeah. shootout. Yeah. But but we played in some big games and we won some big games. But you know, the culture of Players who are dialed in, they keep winning, man. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you did lose 93-82. Yeah, I mean, listen, but you, but you, you had tw- you dropped 29. Of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a big game. They were. I don't know. I don't know if they were number one in the country at the time, but you know, they were just big, man. Like that's the difference, right? Like yeah. I tell people all the time, like you play against a Division two, II, Division three school in preseason, right? They come into town and you give them a game, and they're in the game for the first. 30 minutes until your bigs wear them out. Yeah. Your bigs wear them out. Like Division Two, Division Three don't have seven footers. Um, and their bigs wore us out. 1999. So uh, coach retired? Yeah. While you were, th- while you were no, there? No, right, right after. After, after yeah. you were there. One season after. And then you, you left before he retired. Yeah. And you entered the draft. Mm-hmm. How did you feel that entering the draft? I was nervous. Right, I think once you enter the draft, you're you, you're putting yourself out there, you know. You're setting yourself up to to not be drafted, mm-hmm. you know. And with my history, nobody knew, like what they were gonna get if they were gonna get the demon or they're gonna yeah, get the they, baller. They, you just and you didn't know if, what what teams were willing to take that chance, right? Right. So because you average 15, 15 plus five, and six. I had to, I had to. See, if you look at my college numbers, right, my points dropped. Over time, mm-hmm. and I and there's multiple reasons, right? I think I was way less focused the f- longer I stayed there, but also I had to switch my game. Up. I had to prove that I could distribute. I had to prove that I could handle the ball, run an offense, throw the ball ahead, and let people score, and not be the scorer. Because I mean, I'm six six two, you know, I'm not going to go in the NBA and just start putting up buckets, right. you know, especially that NBA, right? That NBA was guards post you up, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and bigs got the ball, it's you posted. run through the bigs. Yeah. So my size, that wasn't really doing it. Was uh, on your sen- in your senior year, was uh, Rafa still there? Yeah. He was still there? He's from Queens too. Like, yeah. I just had to mention that. Rafa. Skip, skip to my Lou. Skip to my Lou. How was is, playing with him? Like, cause he's a street legend back in New he York. He is a street like, legend. And, and, I, and I will say this, um, I don't think I've ever played with a more committed person. I don't think I've ever been around someone more disciplined and never seen anybody chase it the way he chased it. Um, Our personalities didn't mix at that time, Mm. right? Like we were just from two different worlds, too far apart. Um, But, you know, you grow up, meaning me, and you look back and you appreciate, you know, what he was going through and what he was willing to do at that time to get where he wanted to go. Right. I didn't have that. Yeah, he had that. He had that. Okay, so now Denver Nuggets, Mm -hmm. second round, 33 pick overall. Mm -hmm. How much was your rookie contract? 
Oh, <laughs> I'm going right to it. How much was your rookie contract? Oh gosh, I think back at that time it was like three hundred and thirty-three thousand. Huh. Yeah. yeah, not bad for a thirty-three pick back then. Yeah, yeah. but but listen, it's an NBA lifestyle, right? right? Like, thank God I had veterans like McDice and McLeod and Rogers and Jones and Van Exel, who you know Chauncey Billups. Like, I had great, great yeah, that team was yeah veterans. Mm -hmm. Um you know, who always looked out for you. Um, because when you're staying in Ritz Carlton's in Four Seasons and eating in specific places, like 303,000 can go quick. Yeah. You know, I mean, after taxes, it, it's, yeah. you know, and after your agent and setting up your life, um, there's not a lot left to spend. Right. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget it. I got into a, to a card game mm -hmm. and, uh, Boo Ray, and I got booed, and I had to match the pot, and the pot was big, you know. The pot was, I was on the plane, and the pot was big, and I didn't have that type of dough yeah. to match that pot. And the, this got, was with the team? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I got, I got in way over my head. Yeah. You know, I shouldn't even have been at that table. Right. Right, I'm looking at. Who's at the table? Van Exel, Bryant Stith, George McLeod, me. And these guys already guys have been have, in the NBA for 10, have. 12 years, right? Yeah. And I shouldn't be at that table. You're playing with big boy money over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't have big boy money. <laughs> <laughs> so I lost. I lost. And I lost big. And uh, the veteran on that team took care of me and covered, covered the loss for Who me. covered your loss? Nick Van Exel. Van, Van Exel? Yeah. Who took you under the wing? Did anybody take you under the wing? Probably George McLeod. I don't know if you know George McLeod. George McLeod yeah. played at Florida State. Um, as tough as they get, yeah. You know, like George McLeod kind of took me under his wing. Popeye Jones watched me from afar, and and, and Antonio McDice like it. let me follow him yeah. in a sense. You know, like I I just had real souls, man. Like just real good. So whose bag did you carry? Because you're a rookie now. Yeah, no. Bag? But what's interesting <laughs> is we didn't do that. Really? Yeah, there was none of that for no some reason. Stuff? No, no, there was no hazing, no, like, you know, you're, you're the rookie, you got to do this or do that. Um, you didn't even have to treat for dinner? Nothing back then? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, come on, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Was that, the, that was the NBA, that was just Denver, because it seems that, like that, this was the I think thing. that's different. I think certain teams, you know, run that. Okay. I, those guys didn't. Those guys, I mean, I'm telling you, man, like, when I got traded, to the Celtics, I cried. Mm. Like, not because I was happy going to the Celtics, that I was leaving- The family. These guys. Right. You know, like, it was the first time, that was probably the first time in my life that I loved basketball. Like, loved it. And and that's that's kind of what they gave me there. And, but Denver, they, they, they kept a close eye on you. Yeah. They didn't let you go out to the club, yep. and everything, they was like, so why did they trade you? Was it because, was it anything that happened or was it because of your performance? Because you averaged about three points and two, yeah, two assists. Yeah. 13. I mean, I was, I was, a, you know, I was at the, I was at the end, you know, I was at the end of the bench and you never know if you're going to get in. Um, you know, there were times I was, periods of times I was on the injured reserve list. Mm -hmm. You know, back then there was no G League. Right. So, so you, you were always part of the team. There was, D, was it D League back then? No, I did, there wasn't even, there was just the CBA. Oh. It was called the CBA back then. Um, and it's tough. It's, it's just a different role, right? It's a different role. But I think I had guys, um, that said, listen, we're going to help you, kid. You know, like, we're going to, we're going to look out for you. Like, we want you to, mm. we want you to succeed. Right. And, um, you know, those guys, you know, when I got sober, I hunted them down, you know what I mean? Because in 1999, the mission wasn't accomplished. What they were trying to do. What they were trying to do. But in 2008, you know, when, when I got to where I was supposed to be, they were the people who I called. Right. You know, guys like that.